and say you are welcome to the One Grace Church and make them feel welcome. Give a sincere compliment this morning. Admire someone. Be the reason why somebody is smiling this morning. Be the reason why someone is giving a smiling face this morning. Give a sincere welcome this morning. this morning. Glory to God. From wherever you are watching us from, listen to us from, I want to know that we love you and we appreciate you and we are glad that you are here having service with us this morning. Glory to God. Open your Bible with me to the book of Psalm 133. Um, we we'll start the reading from verse 1. Psalm 133. Start the reading from verse 1. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for burden to do what? Do do well together in what? In unity. He said, how good and pleasant it is for what? For burdens. So anytime you see the word burden, he's talking to a certain kind of people. And most times he's talking to believers. Glory to God. So he said, how pleasant it is for us as believers to live together in what? In unity. So it is God's desire for us to what? To live together in unity. So in verse 2, he said what? He's like the precious ultimate upon the head that ran down from the bread of Aaron that went down to the skirt of his garment. Verse 3, he says, as the dew of Emo, as the dew that descend upon the mountains of Dion, for there the Lord the blesses is and even life forevermore. Glory to God. I can teach all day from this verse 3 alone. But for the sake of this teaching, I will just stay with verse 1. He said what? He said, how pleasant it is for brethren to live together in unity and in harmony. The title of my teaching this morning is how to handle conflict in the relationships and in marriage. There is a way. But one thing that you must first know is what? There's something that God wants. There's something that God desires. That first of all, he wants you to be together in unity, in harmony. So he said, how good it is. So if you're in church with us last Sunday, when I spoke about that it is good, not for what? It is not good for what? For man to be alone. That it is God's desire for what? For us to have someone. Genesis 2 verse 18. So God looked at Adam. He said, it is not good. So beyond us having a companion, beyond us having an helpmate, God desired that what? That we live together in unity and in what? And in harmony. He desires that we live together in unity and in harmony. 
So it's God's purpose for us to live together in harmony. And someone might say, Pastor, I don't even have a boyfriend. I don't even have a girlfriend. This teaching is for the future. Record it, save it, tell the media to ensure that it is live for you. Glory to God. So you can have it. Some teachings are not for now. They are for the future. Are we together? You know, it's easier for you to say, okay, maybe you are having an issue with your spouse now. And it's out to handle conflict. Then it's okay. Ah, this summer will help us solve our issue. But this one now, you don't even have anybody. More or less that you want to have conflict. Do you understand? There's nobody to fight. No, we are looking for who to fight with you. No, there's nobody for who to fight with. It's for the future. So save it and keep it for the future. So why are we teaching how to handle conflict? Why are we teaching some of number one? Because we don't want it to be ignorant of the devil's device. Look at the first thing I'm saying. We don't want to be ignorant of the devil's device. The devil does not want you to have an happy home. The devil is against a believer's happy home. So every Christian must know this. That the devil does not want you to have a happy home. So because of that, you must be aware of that. And be able to approach and look at every problem from that perspective. So, does that mean that every issue is inspired by the devil? No. But first and foremost, you must know that the devil what does not want you to have happy home. So, he tries everything possible to bring disagreement, argument, strife, unforgiveness, lust inside the home, disrespect. He does everything possible. Why is he doing that? He's looking for a way to bring the home down. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10, he says the devil come to steal, to kill and to destroy. To steal and to kill and to destroy now, what does it mean that the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy? The end game of the devil is to destroy. But before he destroy, what does he do? He first steal. What is devil stealing? Your money? No. Joy. So what the devil will do in your home is to steal the joy in your home. So first of all, it will make you to start complaining about your spouse. So when you find that all you do all the time is to complain, why do you put this here? Why can't this be here? Why is this thing there? Be conscious to know that what there is something you are. You will never appreciate such person anymore. You will never see good in that person anymore because the devil has already still something away. So instead of you to see your spouse and say, oh. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing that. All you can see is what is problem. Let me give you a very good instance. Imagine a wife wake up very early in the morning to take care of the kids for school and while bathing the kids, water poured on the, on the ground. That is an obvious reason for you to see it and said, what is the water doing here? I've told you when you bathe for these kids, always clean this water. As good as that is, do you know that each time you see that water on the floor, you will never be able to appreciate what that woman is doing every morning by betting for the kids. So it's lovely to say, well done. Thank you for taking care of my daughter. Thank you for taking care of our children. The devil has still that joy, that appreciation, and is making you to be seeing what? This consentment. It's making you to be seeing what will make you not to be happy. So a believer must be aware of these things. Because his devil aim for you to steal your joy away. So, if you find that one, every time in your house, all you do is complain. No, the devil is already hard to work. So, why are we teaching this number two? It's for us to be able to get rid of ignorance. And I've always said the antidote to ignorance is what? Is knowledge. The antidote to ignorance is knowledge. So I've told us this time with that number that when I nearly got married, I have issue, me and my wife, because there's a way I press toothpaste, there's a way she press toothpaste. So every day, because you have to brush your teeth at least minimum of once in a day. So when you go there, you see the toothpaste, I'll get angry. I will talk. 
Why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? And the Holy Ghost told me that. So what is the problem? I said, can't you see this? I said, you know, I don't know how you guys do the Holy Ghost. Me, God, can't you enter a renew and let this? He said, no, she does not have a problem. You have a problem. You have a problem. I said, what do you mean I have a problem? He said, you are the one who have a problem. Live with this. Do you understand? You cannot change this person. You can't. There are things we will never change in our spouse. Are you listening to me? So many of you who are trying to get married, you are looking to change somebody's essence, somebody's daughter. Good news. You will never be able to change that person. <laughs> so if you are single, say congratulations to me. I'm not here married. <laughs> so I'm asking those questions. Sorry. How do you press toothpaste? <laughs> How many times do you change your boxers? How many times do you wash your towels? Those things are very important. And God told me this thing will never change. It doesn't have to change. So I follow suit and start pressing. Do you know what happened? When I started pressing the toothpaste that way, so one day she noticed that, ah, why is this toothpaste like this? Then she pressed it the other way around. So because I was already using prayer, I just go that day. I just press it because I closed my eyes each time I want to press it. She now called me and said, babe, why do you press toothpaste like this? And I look. I said, because I, I want peace to reign. Get what I'm trying to say. I either seek peace than complain. I either seek peace than complain. As much as you see yourself as a perfect person, no one is perfect. There are one million things my wife is tolerating around me. There are one million things she has accepted about me. But do you know problem? I need to talk to the guys first in this church this morning. Glory to God. Guys, are you with me? Because you are the man. So don't enter marriage with the mindset that you want to remove another person's daughter. Have you seen men beat their wife because of correction? They say they are correcting her. It is, this is the problem. You are not to beat your wife. To, she's not your daughter. She's not your son. Are we together, man? You are not. In the place of, okay, I want to correct. Mm -mm, you are not a teacher. You are not. Paraventures, there are issues that need to be treated. Talk about it. Seek counsels. That is why, that is why we say that anybody who wants to get married must have an, a marriage counselor. Somebody that you are accountable to. Are we together? That can help you see it from a different perspective, from a different light. Am I making sense this morning? So it's important for us to see this. So open your Bible with me to 1st 3 verse 7 and I would like all the men to read this passage for me. 1st 3 verse 7. Can, we, can the men stand up in church this morning? 1st Peter 3 verse 7. Ladies, please celebrate the men in churches this morning. Come on ladies, you can do better. You can do better. 1st Peter 3 verse 7. Is that NLT? Thank you. So, men, can we read together? One, two, go. In the same way, you, husband, must give honor to your wife. Treat your wife with understanding as you live, as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. Come on, celebrate the men as they have the seats. Celebrate them, please have your seats. So, the Bible says what here? That men, he said, in the same way, so we are still going to read it because the, this passage is in context. So he first spoke to women from verse 1 to 6. We are coming there shortly. But in verse 7, he was talking to men categorically. He said that what? You husband, what? You wives, you husband, what do you do? Give honor to your wife. So a man's duty is to give honor to his wife. A woman's duty is to give honor. Learn to honor your wife. And there are ways to show it. You can't say you honor somebody you are not showing it. You cannot see it. We will see it. In what and in actions. In what? So I won't say I honor my spouse and my actions is proven otherwise. So when I say I honor my spouse, my actions will show that I what? That I honor her. I honor her. Some men can't carry back for their wife. They feel like because they are the man. Mm -hmm. What makes you a man is to be able to do 
heavy duty. Heavy. And I'm coming there shortly. He said, because he said, treat her with understanding as little together. Because she's a weak, she's weaker. So because she's weaker, she should be able to help her carry her bag. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Carry the child. Carry the child. So every man in this house start breeding muscles. Let me tell you something. When my wife was pregnant, I started lifting dumbbells every day. Not because I want to build muscles, but because I know that there will be more responsibility for me to be able to carry my children. So I was doing press up, lifting weights for me to have muscles. So we'll give back to our children. You can ask her. I carried my son more than she ever. You know, there's a woman used to back child. But me, I back my child more. Because once we are going out, I put it. I, we brought everything to carry baby. The only thing I know I never do is tie a pa. That a pa thing. We didn't. <clears throat> even she never. We never. You know when people say that uh, you must back baby. We we back out, but we never bought because we never liked that idea. Do you understand? Sir? So we bought everything that we can use to back, even when going to church. And luckily for us, now our church in that place, they don't bore you away. As you and your wife is going to church, same thing in TOGC. When you are coming to church with your spouse, the men should carry the, that baby. Carry your child. Carry the bag. I will get what I'm saying, church. She treat her with honor and the love. Carry it. If you see any man in TOGC who is not helping his child, his wife to carry, carry, carry you, the men, go and carry the baby and show, show him the way. He says, I bring, ma, bring, let me help you. This is how we do it here. So the man will learn. Glory to God. You see them coming to church, they're not carrying back. Go and collect the bag from the woman. Sorry, ma, please, let me help you. In love. So next time when they're coming to church, what do you do? The man too, please, bring it before they will collect that bag from my hand now. <laughs> they will not think I'm not caring. Learn it. You can learn it. Are we together? Tell your neighbor you can learn these things. You can learn these things. Some people should show. Show, show, show honor. honor. So they, so they honor, honor outside, outside, but they don't, but they don't honor, honor inside. inside. No. No. Honor, honor outside, outside and inside. And inside. Publicly, publicly and privately. And privately. So, 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 so there is a place, place of understanding. understanding. You know, you know where is where we start this teaching? We need the foundation. That, that what, what we need to, to get, get married, married is not money. money. But what is not money. What understanding. So, so a man must, must learn to treat a woman with understanding. Who may have moods? moods. Who may have, have moods? moods. One, one, some, some can just happen. You, you not not chop, chop, chop. They are in their menstruation. Some of us touch. touch. That's that everything. everything. Pa, 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 pa. You must, you must understand. understand. Somebody, Somebody that normally, normally touch her lap before, she will smile. You touch her lap, she just eats. No. Do you understand? You must just look. Okay. You start to ask, baby. You must understand this. And listen to me. People are going through a lot, whether male or female. Men have been wired in a way. Come back, crook, fend for a person. You, you must, what do I say? Avoid house app, get it. If you cannot avoid it, find a way around it. App when you can. Just little things that you can do, do it. That's what makes I a weaker vessel. Weaker vessel is not for you to show strength and be somebody else's daughter. No. If there's any way you should show strength, it's spiritual strength that you should show. Go to God. And you go and look for money, I'll say. <laughs> Those are the two ways you should show strength. I was going to church. Why do you show that you are the man by looking for money and bring the money home? Show that you are the man by leading spiritually. That's how to show strength. Listen, what do I say? She is equal partner in God's gifts and new life. We are all new creation. We have the same spirit of God. So we are all equal in the presence of God. So, but even though you are the man, you are meant to take the leadership in your house. But you must understand this. So you must treat your wife with honor. So he said, if you don't treat her as you should, your prayers will not be what? Your prayers will not be heard. And I know many ladies like this passage. You've watched Nollywood and you have watched Hollywood. You now mix the two together. You know, you know, you say, if you do me anyhow, God will not answer your prayer. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Balance teaching. You know, in theology, we teach undiluted word of God. You cannot dilute it. He says your prayers will not be answered. But that is not what it simply means. So let me show you what it means when you see it's not as if God will not answer your prayer. That's not what the pastor is saying. 
So the person is not like, God will not answer your prayer. So those women, we think you can cause a man. You know, sometimes you have arguments with some women, and will tell you, you will see. My God will show you, and they will do their hand like this, and they will say, I will naked myself, middle of the night, 1 a.m., I will cause you. I will look, wait, wait, wait. 1 a.m., and bless me. Do you understand? You don't have blessing, you think you have cause. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have blessing, you have, you have cause. Why is it only cause you have? Who gave it to you? Have you reason it? Why do you have so much power and so much belief in your ability to cause someone than your ability to bless someone? You must begin to think about this. Your strength should be no saying other attitude one that my wife used to say. Should I tell you? Girls, yes, this should I tell you? No, I will not tell you. <laughs> Come for. When, when we are doing marriage anger, we will share that one. Glory to God. Your prayers will not be heard. Give me the amplified versions of this, please. Let me show you something. The amplified. Okay. Understanding with great what gentleness and what and tact with and what. Do you understand? You must gather intelligence. To the issue of the woman. So what is it next? He said, as with physical, what someone what physically weak, since she is a woman, show her honor and respect, fellow heir of what of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be what in that or what temporary and provided AMPC and cut off. Otherwise, you cannot what. So why will your prayers be in that? Because when you are having disagreement with someone, you will not be able to pray. Effectively, not even you will not be able to pray naturally, more or less praying effectively. Do you understand? I'm saying now, when there's an argument, naturally, put that prayer when you pray is religious prayer. You pray, do you understand? Both of you will not be able to pray, not pray effectively. So, that's the entrance to, to your prayer. Your prayer. Don't like, don't like, like a witch. witch when you're fighting, when you're fighting your, spouse, your spouse. Go, with, go, with. God, God, the eight works. So, fight with me, God, keep blessing me. You will, you will be the one to miss out. <laughs> Glory to God. So you must understand. But the only thing is that what you will not be able to pray effectively. That's what it means. Do you get that now? Do you get that now? So it's important for us to do this. So men must deal with understanding. Just deal with understanding with our spouse. Very important. Very important. First Peter 3 verse 1 to 6. Let me speak to ladies a little bit before I talk to both parties together, then we close for today. I we getting blessed in this church. First Peter 3 from verse 1 to 6. NLT. It says, Likewise, you wives be in subjection to your husband. Now, listen to me. You know, you can say, Okay, he's talking to women that are married. Yes, save this knowledge for what? For the what? For the future. He said, then even some refuse to obey the good news. Your golden lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over. What does this passage mean? What was he talking about? He said, some of you marry unbelievers. So, paraventure, you married unbelievers, which you should not. So, he's talking to people who are already married to unbelievers before they hear the message. He said, how do you handle such matter? He said, not in words but in actions. So listen to me. There are many things you want to correct in your spouse. You can't do it in words, but in actions. So ladies, learn to use your action to correct your spouse than your words. Do you hear what I'm saying now? In your relationship, use your action more than your words. You see, in verse 2, it says, by observing your pure and reverent lives, it will change. I think the passion translation gives it better. Of this place. So, when the person begins to see how you behave, you begin to minister to them by your actions. He said, for when they observe your pure and godly life before God, it will impact them deeply. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It will impact them deeply. It will impact them. So one of the ways to tell somebody you're not studying your Bible is to do what? You study your Bible. Do you understand? You study your Bible. Where should I go and study? 
babe, please help me with this. Do you understand? Without you, every day you wake up, you are not praying. Every day you are not studying. Every day you are not cooking. Every day enter kitchen and cook, or oh God. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Correct more with your actions. I'm talking to ladies now. Correct more with your actions. That's what the Bible has three. It says, don't be concerned about the outward beauty. I think we spoke about this. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy as expensive jewelry or beautiful clothes. Are we saying they are bad? No. Look beautiful. Wear them. Flaunt them. But that should not be your focus, ladies. Some ladies, the only things they have in their head is the woman head they want to buy. The clothes they want to buy. The jewelry they want to buy. They've never think about a book they want to buy before. They've never think about a course they want to do that will advance their life and future before. So ladies, listen to me. As much as it is good to look good, it is more important to add more value to the things that will matter. So, fancy hairstyle, not be today. Tell your neighbor, fancy hairstyle, not be today. Not be today. So, not be today, team. People, they spend money for air. Not be today. Do you understand what I'm saying now? But don't be concerned. Don't put all your case on them. Look good, dress good, smell good. But don't, see, there's more to beauty. Verse 4. This is how the only women of old made themselves what? Beautiful. So how do a woman make herself beautiful? They trust their God and accept the authority of their husband. Did you hear that? So the authority of your husband that you accept makes you beautiful. Makes you honorable. You must understand this. Verse 6. I love these verses. He said, for instance, Sarah obeyed her husband Abraham and called him master. You are daughter when you do what is right without fear of what your husband might do. Listen to me. It says you are the daughter of Sarah when you honor and submit to your spouse. KJV said that Sarah looked at Abraham and he called him my lord. Do you know what that means? In the court of law, when we call judge, what? My lordship. My lord. So when a judge is speaking, what happened? Whatever he says, and he carry, what is that thing that he used to carry? And they eat it. Bah! That is the final. That's why I said, don't marry a fool. Don't marry somebody that his authority will not be final in your life. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying now? If you cannot trust that person's authority, why are you marrying the person? Because people are like, oh God, why is it going to be fine? I'm not saying you cannot argue with Gary, but see, it's better for you to. I would rather trust the judgment of my wife. I trust her. She's a woman, but I trust her judgment. So I will not marry someone that cannot trust her judgment. You must be deliberate. These are the things you look out for in spouse, in someone. Can he take care of my children? Can he lead our children in the way of the Lord? This is how our parents lead me. This is how my dad leads us. My dad is not a good role model. A good example. This person I want to end up with, will he be a better one? My dad left the house when he was 10 years old. With this guy, not Jack Patu, when he's 10 years old. Listen to me. Some men see problem, they go and leave wife, go marry another wife. Irresponsible men. So the person you are dating, begin to look for that trait and see if that person has such traits. Ask questions. What happens if you lose your job? If you don't have money, how do we navigate life? Both parties talk about these things. Talk about it. Am I making sense? So a woman must what must submit as far as to a man that you can lead. Man, when you have, when you have something you want to say, express yourself, say it loud the best way you can, but don't superimpose. You must know when to talk. You must know when to get him. There are tricks and ways to do it. That's why intelligence is important. Wisdom is needed. If you are a woman, you must know the love language of your spouse. Know how to praise him. Know how to psych him. 
know how to make him sign check he did not apply for. Do you understand? Make out, make out, know how to make him do transfer. He is not deliberate about it. After he has done it on his way to work, <laughs> this guy just collected money from our account. I don't want to use this money. Okay, this guy, she does she they shack me forever shacking you. Do you know? There's a way to go around it. And let me tell you something. Young girls used to have those skills while dating. They got married, they lost the skills. So be deliberate. These things, see, there are some things that you write down for today. When you get married, go and read them. Learn them. Sharpen your skill. Do you understand what I'm saying now? There are things I've written many years ago, maybe 15 years ago. I go back to my, I don't throw away my book. So I, I, hey, I made this plan before I got married. I've not done it. So yeah, sharpen. Sharpen that skills. I heard this sermon many years ago. I wrote it down. I go back to those notes. I read it. It's put something back in my home. Do you understand? Have tricks. Find a way to communicate. Find a way to talk. Find a way. Find a way. So quickly, let me round up how to resolve conflicts. I'm just going to give us very few um, things today. I have so much to say, but I will just give us very few. Number one, fight fear. Fight fear. To every fight in the, in the world, to every war, there are rules of engagement. Even Russian and Ukraine that are fighting today, there's rule of engagement. Do you understand? They will tell you, you can kill, you can shoot, you can throw bomb, but don't kill women, don't kill child. Do you understand? Now? There are rules of engagement. So why having disputes and conflict and you are fighting with your spouse? Let the limit that will never pass. You guys should talk about it. Have a rules of engagement. So one of the rules of engagement with my spouse is that no matter what is happening, we are not cutting our head off. We always solve it. We would rather kill the force, destroy the force, and send the force away. The Bible says, he said, destroy the forces that want to destroy the happy home. So whatever it is, our ego, we rather, we rather let go of ego. We would rather let go of pride, desires, and wants than to lose the home. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So, what is your rule of engagement? Talk about these things. They matter not to destroy. So, learn how to fight fairly and with understanding. Some people, when they are fighting, they don't care. They can destroy whatever they built with their hands. Fight fear. Don't fight to end the relationship. Some people don't care if short are doors when they're fighting. Who is that your uncle? Who is that your dad? I don't care. They shut any doors. They say all sort of things. Fight fear. Fight fear. Decisions when you're hungry. Don't make decisions when you're angry. You might end up making the wrong decisions and might cost you. Don't make decisions when you're angry. Many people, when they're angry, it is easier to make, they quickly make a decision. Don't be too quick to make a decision when you're angry. Whether in the business world, whether in ministry, in finances, in every area of your life. When you can't, when you know you are angry, be cautious not to make a decision. Number three, resolve conflict with the lenses of God's word. Every issue, resolve it with the resolve it. Talk about it. What is God was saying concerning this matter? What is God saying concerning this issue? See, learn this is very important. Number what now? Learn to see grace. Exhibit grace. Dispense grace when fighting. When solving issues. When having misunderstanding. misunderstanding learn to dispense grace. Learn to give grace. That's one thing me and my wife we spoke about. We said, do you understand that when people offend you at work, you forgive them. When people offend you in ministry, you forgive. Because you're teaching grace. You understand grace. But when it comes to our relationship, our marriage, we forget what we have been taught. 
we don't dispense grace. We don't forgive. We don't forgive. There is a place of grace. There is a place of forgiveness. Do you understand what I'm saying now? And grace is not that you, you forgive and forget. So many of the things that is causing all this of conflict in marriages and relationship is because we are not seen it with the lenses of grace. We are not practicing what we believe. You are a believer in what? In grace. Dispense it in your home. Are we together? Dispense it in your home. Let your spouse enjoy grace. Let your spouse enjoy grace. Some people even have issues with their spouse enjoying grace. Let your spouse enjoy unmerited favor. Are we together? Let them enjoy it. Let them enjoy it. Number what now? Be conscious of the word you say to each other when having misunderstanding. So when you're having issues, be conscious of the words that you say. Words are like egg. When they come out, they break. Pow! To pack it back is always very hard. So be deliberate about it. So don't say awful words to each other. A fighting. Do you understand? Have it. Tame your tongue. This can be very challenging and it can be hard, but it can be learned. Are you getting something? You can learn it. So in relationship, in marriage, there are skills that we must what we must learn. Some of us came up, but some of you, I didn't come up from such home, them just anyway, anyhow, you get something. Some people came up from a very abusive home. So they see dad use insultive words. It is it's a normal thing to say, okay, dad, you don't book or you should you for such words, which means in, in English that it will not be well with you, you are crazy, you are mad, you are this. It is normal to them. So when you come up from that environment, you meet your girl. Now, listen to me. In that home, maybe they don't even mean it. But that is their own love language. Do you understand what I'm saying now? They just see that. I'm not sharing. <laughs> are you crazy? Are you mad? Those things are normal. So, when you are in a relationship, who's of a government? In this, it might be your spouse. She has never heard such a word. You only hear it in movie. And found that when they say you are mad, it means you are huh? How can you say I am mad? Please. You must understand that there are some words that you will never say out, whether you are hungry or not. Are we together? There are some words we never say, so we must understand this. Very important. So we can learn it. We can become better. You know, it's not going to be easy for some people, right? So you can learn it. So there are things that we must have to learn to upgrade ourselves, to update ourselves, to become a better person. Number what? Speak without shouting. Fight without shouting. Fight without neighbors knowing it. You can learn it. The aim of that conversation is not for neighbor to hear. Do you understand? This is who you are talking to, not your neighbors. So listen to me. When you are when you are arguing with each other, be conscious. Of people who is going to hear it. Listen to me. When you resolve that matter, you will not go back to them that you have resolved it. But they will be looking at you with the lenses of what they heard you speak while you are currently. Are we getting what I'm saying now? And because we are believers, we have to be conscious of that. Block this room to this room. When anything you speak here, they don't have to put their head down in the next room they are listening. You must be very deliberate. So one of the reasons why people speak and shout when they are angry. How many of you used to shout when you are angry? Let me see your hand up. I know, I know, I know we have guys and girls. No. Let me see your hand up. Do we have liars in this church? <laughs> I, almost everybody do that when they are angry. The first thing that happens when you are angry is to raise your voice. To prove that you are angry. And if you are a man, the first thing you want to do is to you change the tone of your voice. To, you make it more adding. Do you understand? So, what does that show? It shows that the person is far away from your heart. That is the reason why you have to shout. Are we together? And please, 
let me say this whenever argument is getting intense one someone should know how to just walk away before it gets to something else. See, every argument can later be resolved. It doesn't have to be resolved at that matter, at that present point. Are you getting something now? Every argument does not have to be resolved. It's part of the rules of engagement. Is Can we talk about this some other time? See, don't say no. Let's resolve it now. See, that let's talk about it another time. Maybe in a few minutes, maybe at night, it will help to save a lot of things. It will help. So have rules of engagement. What works for me will not work for you. Understand this. I told you before, there's no perfect marriage. There's no perfect to some arguments. So whatever is going to work in your own, both of you have to talk about it. For instance, let me give you an illustration. <laughs> I think it was my mom who gave my wife that advice when we got married. When you want to talk to your husband, that men's brain are calmer in the middle of the night. That works for my dad. He's a, he's a gentleman. So when you wake him in the middle of the night, you talk to him, he listening. But me, I came from another world. <laughs> I came from another world. I believe that when you wake me up in the middle of the night, I want to sense that there's something more that you want to achieve. Beyond what you want to say, there is a kind of manipulation that I want to come in. That is my own belief. I'm not saying it is right. Because at that time, my brain is active. I'm not sensible and I can respond to you. Why do you want to wake me when I'm trying to cast some rest, when I'm not conscious of what I'm going to say? And most times, you just want to ask me yes or no, true or false, ah, sign the check, you know, this kind of... Ah, no, 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 no. So, when you wake me up in the middle of the night... I am all, even to things I'm going to say yes to, I'm telling you no, 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 <laughs> till I wake up the next morning. I'll tell you, can we discuss that thing you were trying to talk to me? Because I feel like I'm more available at the day for communication. For me, I prefer us to talk in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening when I'm not exhausted, when we can have discussion not at night when I'm trying to sleep. That's me. So it took my wife some time to understand that thing. So now, is it the kind of work they do? There is no phone. I understand that that boat there, the only time the woman could have conversation with him is what? It's night. But not in this day when there's Telegram, there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's everything. TikTok, everything. Have in boys, private chats. You and your spouse can keep chatting. I will get to what I'm saying now. So this is how to roll. And listen, when I say fight fear, let me explain again what I mean by fight fear. When me and my wife we are having misunderstanding, for instance, maybe we have an issue concerning this bag. It doesn't mean we are not talking about a shoe. Are we together? Some people, when they are fighting or they have misunderstanding, they shut every door and every funnel to access. So, me and my wife can be having an intense argument on WhatsApp right now. No, babe. Yes, babe. Ye, babe. Boo, babe. On WhatsApp. And on Instagram, she's sending me a video of a skit. And I'm laughing. I'm responding to that. And on Telegram, I'm telling her, babe, you get money for your account. Raise your husband now. And on WhatsApp, he said, no, babe. This one said, no. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That is how to fight. Discuss this matter, but don't shut other doors. To the fact that you are fighting doesn't mean that you will not pay your children's school fees. To the fact that you will not give your wife's money or pay her bills. Some people, when they are fighting, they shut. They want to show you that I'm fighting with you, and they want to shut everything to prove a point. No, we must fight fair. Rules of engagement. So my wife can be unhappy with me concerning a matter. Doesn't mean that I go to Anna ask her for something she's not going to do. Doesn't mean that in the middle of the night or at daytime or whenever I want to do the inner duty, we will not be able to do it. We might be fighting, but we are doing the needful. Are we get what I'm saying? Say, tell your neighbor, fight fair. Am I making sense? What number am I now? Seven. What 
when there are issues yet to be resolved, don't seek solace in the opposite sex. So when you are having issue with your spouse, don't see, don't go and seek solace in the opposite sex. People do this a lot in marriage and relationship. They have besties. I'm not saying don't have bestie. But when you have issue with your spouse, don't discuss with your bestie. If there is a need for you to discuss with someone, go to your marriage counselor. Are you get what I'm saying now? Don't go to bestie. And I say opposite sex first. In the world we live today, opposite sex is not the only person to talk to. Sometimes even same sex. Because we found out in this modern day that we are in, people now have same-sex relationship. So you have issue with your wife. He says go to his friend's place. But what they are going to do there, you will be better self. You should go to opposite sex. Do you understand what I'm saying now? That to go to that same sex. Do you understand what I just said now? So please try not to find solace in someone else. Try not to find solace in someone else. Don't compare your spouse with someone else. Don't do that. When there's an issue, find a way to resolve it. When the matter is yet to be resolved, stay home. If you want to step out, step out, but not to an opposite sex house. Not to call opposite sex for counseling. And she will not be petting you in the office. At, do you understand? Uh, that's, where, that's where we met her. You know, I say, okay, ah, this guy get wisdom past my wife, self. This guy get wisdom past my husband. Now, so it starts. Are we together? No matter what now. I'm just trying to rush. Learn to live above and beyond mistake. Learn to live above and beyond mistakes. Mistakes are bound to happen. If you are going to marry, mistakes will happen. There will be issues, but we must learn to resolve it and learn to live above it. Look at the story of Adam and Eve in the Bible. Eve did not commit fornication, so to every issue, it doesn't have to do with fornication or adultery. Are we together? But <laughs> Eve disobeyed probably what God told, probably the husband have told her, we must not eat of this thing. God says no, but she disobeyed it. When God asks, he said, God, yes, truly, it is my wife. God said, for that actions, I'm sending you both out. That was the last time the matter was ever discussed in their family. The Bible even says, the moment they come out, what did he say? He said, Adam knew his wife. Hey? After such gravity, some men will never forgive. You made them, you made me lose my job. You make me lost paradise. You make me lose this. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We must learn to live above mistakes. Are we together? These lessons will save your marriage. It will save your relationship. Write it down, hold it fast, and run with it. Create an atmosphere. Number what now? Create an atmos an atmosphere where love thrives, where problem can be resolved in your relationship and your marriage. There must be an atmosphere for love. There must be an atmosphere where relationship, where issues can be talked about. Your spouse should not be scared to discuss matter reason together and resolve the matter. Are you getting what I'm saying now? No matter what it is, create an atmosphere. Oh yeah, let's talk about this thing. This matter. Let's talk about it. Yes, I am at fault. Yes, you are at fault. Yes, this is the issue. It is a mistake. Okay, I am sorry. And learn this number what now? Learn to say I am sorry when you are sorry and when you are not sorry for peace to reign. You hear what I said now? Learn to do what? To say I am sorry. Learn to apologize. When you are sorry, when you are wrong, and when you are not. Men, let me tell you something. You will say, I am sorry for the things you have. Painful parts. And do you know the word happened? 
the Holy Spirit will keep convicting you. Go and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. My wife will have issue. She's going to go. She will say, babe, no, you are going to go. I will say, no, don't you understand? Look at it. He said, no. Tell me you are sorry. I was like, ah. Tell you I'm sorry for this. I said, boy, you are. He said, no. I'm. They will never accept. They will never see it. So you learn to say sorry for peace to reign. Do you understand? The aim of the marriage is not to kill and destroy. It's to bring life. It's to enjoy. What we okay for peace to reign, babe. I am sorry. I love you. End it. End it. You will not die if you say you are what? You are sorry. You will not die if you apologize. You will not die. When you are wrong, learn to say, I am sorry. And learn not to go back to the things that you say you are sorry for. These mistakes, learn not to go back to it. Try not to repeat them. Work hard on these things. Very important. Very important. Correct in love. Correct in love. Number 12. Retrust. Learn to talk. And lastly for this morning, some conflicts are spiritual. Not all. I say some to be self aware. You must and will. What do I say? Every pattern that you see, see some issues you see naturally it might not be in you. It might be some thing that you've inherited from your parents unconsciously by birth, by the issue of blood. Are we together? So there must be what a self awareness. So everyone must be self aware of him or herself. And when you are aware of yourself, what do you do? You must be conscious of the choices that you make afterwards. That is the best deliverance. So it is not prayer that is first needed. It's first that awareness. And be cautious of that choice. So you must be what? Aware. And you must be careful to make the right choices. And listen to me. Don't, said, don't apply what? Physical force to a matter that should be approached with what? Wisdom or what? Or spiritual. So what do we do? There are issues in our relationship, in our marriage, that both of you have to hold hands to talk about and pray about. So, it is not enough just to find a way to end that conflict. You guys will talk about it, hold your hands, and pray about it. This matters. No, I have forgiven you the first time. I have forgiven you. I feel like there's a weakness somewhere. I feel like there's a problem somewhere. Let's talk about it. We've talked about it. What are we going to do not to be able to fall in this kind of mistake anymore. You spoke about it. All those guidelines, all those checkmates, you put them in place. But yet, you hold your hands together in faith. And both of you keep praying together about it. And lastly, get a mentor in your marriage. Get a mentor. Ensure there's someone that can speak over your spouse, whether male or female. Someone that is knowledgeable that has God's kind of wisdom upon them is really going to help you. And last, be ready to change. Give yourself to learning. Be adaptive to change. Be ready to improve and work on yourself. Be ready to be a better person for yourself and for your spouse. Don't be rigid. Don't frustrate somebody's ex son and somebody's ex daughter with your bad character and your bad behavior. Remember, God wants us to have what? Happy home. He wants us to live together what? In unity and in harmony. So ensure this and put this at the back of your mind and your marriage and your relationship will never remain the same again. Have you been blessed this morning? Have you been blessed this morning? Come and celebrate Jesus. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Just bow down your concerning the teaching that we have heard this morning. Just bow down your heads and just say a word of prayer. Tell God to help resolve every conflict you are having in your relationship and your home, tell God to restore broken home, tell God to give you wisdom on how to navigate your relationship, on how to navigate your home. Speak to God right now. Speak to God about it. Speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to God. Tell him to give you wisdom that you need to live with your spouse, with understanding and with knowledge. Pray right now. Pray right now. Pray right now. Tell him to help you resolve every conflict Every conflict, every conflict, every conflict. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. 
Give him the adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Have you been blessed this morning? How are you going to celebrate your pastor this morning? Glory to God. Come on, you can do better. You can do better. Let me do like MJ as Najami. Come on, you can do better. You can do better. Glory to God. So on Thursday, we are going to round up on our teaching series. So ensure that you are in church on Thursday. So our service time, please have your seat. Thursday, uh, we meet in church by 6 p.m. every Thursday. Ensure you are in church. Probably you travel out of Abuja or for one reason, you cannot make it. Um, do where to follow us up online. YouTube at TOGC online. Facebook at TOGC online. Do where to follow us for service, for live service. And on Sunday, we meet every 9 a.m. to start service. Ensure that you do. Glory to God. So we also want to admonish every of our members to try and follow us on all our social media. This is very important. Ensure that you follow us on TikTok, TOGC Online, on Facebook, TOGC Online, Instagram, TOGC Online, X, that is Twitter, TOGC Online, on all social media. In fact, you will see us there, TOGC Online. We are very easy to find. And on YouTube, ensure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, click um, the bell button that you see apparently that whenever we are online, you will get a notification. So we appreciate you. Before we take our offering, us now, as your pastor, I am not insensitive to what is happening in the country at this present moment. I am not because we are all in it together. But there's one thing that we must know is this. There are two things you need to navigate this period. Wisdom of God and leeching on prophecy, which is God's word. What do I say? We did those two things. Things are very hard. Things are very What has God said concerning you? Only what is happening in the country. What are you saying? What God have said? There was a particular place in the Bible. We say, Bible said there was so much hardship. People were eating their own children. It was that bad. But a prophet came by the, by the Spirit of God. He said, by this time tomorrow, there will be abundance. Some people does not believe it. Some people did not. Some people were doubting it. But listen to me. By that time tomorrow, there was abundance. Listen to me. We are not going to give prophecy now because of what is happening. We are not moved by things because prophecy has already gone ahead of us. Glory to God. Are we together? Prophecy has already gone ahead of us. So what are you going to do? Go back to your book of prophecy to what God has said concerning this time and season. Go back to it. Go back to it. I will not borrow. I will lend. I will live in abundance. I will buy without money. God, I've said concerning you, you go back to them. In this period, this is how to navigate. This is how to live above the system of this world. Remember, we have presidents in Nigeria, we have governors, we have ministers, but they are not your God. They are not your source. Who is your source? Who is your source? Who is your God? Who is going to provide for you? Who is going to bless you? Listen to me. Whether you have job or not, who is going to bless you? Whether there's a promotion or not, who is going to bless you? So we understand what works. I will stay at it at no matter the hardship in this country. Some people will get married. They will build house. Get biggest contracts of their life. Life is still changing. So instead of you to be hearing the noises of hardship, or God, turn to the other side to what the possibility of God, to what God can do in this season and in this time. In this season. So I said number two, you need the wisdom of God. What do you need to go? How to navigate? And what is God saying concerning wisdom right now? Why do you need it? See, every one of us, let's begin to look for how to upgrade ourselves at this particular point. Look for how to upgrade yourself. Upgrade yourself. Look for how you can increase your income. 
look for how you can add something to what you are currently doing. That is the wisdom of God. What do I say? Look for how you can currently add something to what you are doing. So many of you, you are in a paid job. Have a side also. Have it. Have something else you are doing. Have the side. This is my admonition to every one of you. Ensure you have it. It's really going to help you at this moment. You need it. You need another source of income. So you have 120k. You can start oil perf business. And you can go with it. Are we together? It doesn't, you know, all you need to do is just put on your status. And everybody's using perf. You can come to church, tell your friends, I sell perf. And do you understand? So imagine you are selling those perf. Aside from salary, you are getting something is coming. There are different kind of business that you can start with. You can start selling bag. Everybody wants to buy woman hair, even in this hardship. You can start selling one. Enough of you trying to buy. I think you should start selling one. You understand what I'm saying? That? So there are different things that you can do. You can let don't have one source of income at this particular time. The wisdom of God is for you to know how to navigate and to ensure that what there are two other things that you can do currently to what you are doing. And I pray that God will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. He will give you wisdom on what to do and how to do in the name of Jesus. Grace will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Despite what is happening in this country, there will be abundance unto you. Doors will open unto you. Favor will open to you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says when men are saying they are casting down, we will say that what we are being lifted up. This will be your testimony. You will be lifted up in the name of Jesus. The Bible says God is the lifters of man's head. God will lift your head. God will lift your head. What no man can do, God will do for you. When men said the doors is shutting, God will open it for you in the name of Jesus. Is it new season for you? Is it new doors for you in the name of Jesus? For in Jesus, mighty name we pray. Have you packaged your offering? Please package your offering. Choir. In the name of Jesus, abundantly in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray for they will never lack in the name of Jesus. Everyone who is partner with this church, that your life will continue to shine brighter and brighter in the name of Jesus. No evil, glory to God, glory to Jesus. I will be closing now, and you know that we are not going to close until we give you just a little time to talk to God. You can speak to God right now. Um, this is last one of the month. You can tell God how you want the remainder of this month to be. Next Sunday is our testimony. And I used to do this. I say, God, now you can talk to God right now. I want to come on Sunday for my testimony. Probably the doors that you are knocking. God, right now, speak to God.